Hi, I am Dr. Pramod Shekharanayar. Welcome you to my video on Association Rule Mining. The Association Rule Mining is an approach in data mining used to discovering patterns of co-occurrence in large data set by identifying entities that frequently appear together in a group. Association rules are if-then statements that help to show the probability of relationships between data items within large data sets in a database. In this video, I am going to cover what is association rule mining, what is the usage of association rule mining, how does it work, and what is the reasons to have different association rule mining algorithms in data mining. The association rule learning is a rule-based machine learning method for discovering interesting relations between variables in large databases. Rule learning is a machine learning technique that induces a target function from examples. The target function is defined jointly as a set of if-then rules. This technique is a basic component of many machine learning systems and has been the first machine learning technology to deliver commercially successful applications. In association rule, association rule can be divided into two parts. One is antecedent and another is consequent. An antecedent is the first half of a hypothetical proposition whenever the if clause proceeds that then close. An antecedent is something that is found in the data and a consequent is an item that is found in combination with the antecedent. So here if you look at the antecedent is being the first half of your rule where this is the rule as an example I have given over bread implies butter. So here the left hand side or the first half is being antecedent and the right hand side or the second half is being consequent and antecedent is being comes under if and consequent is comes under then. For example, I can say here if a customer buy bread then there is a chance of buying butter too. So as what the example I have given over here, in the case where you mine out a association rule, it would be like this. If a customer buys bread, then there is 70% chance of buying butter also along with this bread. So while we discuss, you might have heard of mining and machine learning. So let me have an idea on this what is exactly this mining and machine learning. So data mining is simply looking for patterns that already exist in the data. Machine learning goes beyond what's happened in the past to predict future outcomes based on the pre-existing data. So please do keep this as your uh, understanding about these two as the very preliminary understanding. Now, before we go into the details about association tool mining, let us have some idea about what all are the different possible applications where all you can have association rule mining can bring in. So that you will get an interest on what you're going to hear from now on. Association rules are employed today in many application areas including market basket analysis, web usage mining, intrusion detection, continuous production, bioinformatics, stock market analysis, selective marketing, medical diagnosis and it's not going to stop here. It's keep on going on many many other applications where also it's been used. And when you look at the different companies, uh, rather than mentioning all those companies, even right from big companies to small companies, let me give you some of those well-known companies where it's been used. If you look at Amazon, Netflix, Google, Flipkart, and Spotify have used association rule mining in their recommendation platforms. So this would give an idea about how important this technique is going to be. Now, 
just for uh, the rest of the explanation about association tool mining i'm going to take the application as the market basket analysis so it will be going to give you an idea about of when i'm going to explain how it works this is one of the key techniques used by large retailers to uncover association between items so here in this example if you look at i have just shown some of those baskets which is been of the customer buying behavior so here in customer may get into the supermarket they may buy based on their requirements and uh, those requirements if you take care, if you just take about the example as your supermarket supermarket might be having thousands of items and obviously there would be thousands of customers visiting so when it been so there would be very difficult to identify what are the different buying behavior of the customers for that we can use association tool mining it works by looking for combination of items that occur together frequently in transaction as we have seen one uh, rule just before this is one example of one rule here in the left hand side the left hand side is your antecedent and the right hand side is your consequent just if you look into you can see that milk implies bread wherein what it exactly says whenever a customer buys milk there is a high chance of buying bread too the market basket analysis allows the retailers to identify relationship between the items that people buy now to give a better understanding i'm going to take an example here if you look at this uh, particular slide where in your left hand side you can see a, a database where the transactions are being given which is of a transaction from a supermarket just for your assumption and when it been here in this there are different transaction id is been given as well as items so here each of those transaction id having some items which are which are purchased by the customer so these are all representing different purchases so here in if you take an example of an association tool if you look at here the first example what i have given is diaper implies beer so if you look at here in this example there is diaper in uh, in this example so that look here diaper is been here in a different transaction and beer is also been part of the different uh, transactions so what i have said an association with diaper um, and beer so here i have shown just because of this being together seeing there in some of the transaction i just shown it here with diaper and beer similarly you can see here beer bread and milk appearing together beer here in this if you look at here beer bread beer bread and milk is been appearing together so i have just another association been shown over here beer bread and milk so in the sense whenever a customer buying beer and bread together there is a chance of buying milk too similarly another example is been given over here is milk bread implies a type of cock now before going into more details of association tool mining let us come to know about some of the important terms used in association tool mining the first one is been item set if you look at here the item set is a collection of one or more items in the sense in the set if there is at least one item then we can say it is an item set here in what we have given is as an example milk bread and diaper together so this milk bread and diaper is there in this transaction so if you have milk bread diaper together we can say it is an item set even if only bread itself being there in one trans one item set then obviously we can say it is an item set because what the item set says is that one or more items to be there in that set now what is k item set take this same example here in this you can see there are three items in this if there are three items set then the k is going to be 
So what does it mean by, we can say, this is a three item set. So if there are, assume a case here, we are going to take two items, let it be milk and diaper. Then what I'm going to have, if I'm going to make a, make a set with milk and diaper, then I can say milk and diaper is a two item set since this set is having two items, milk and diaper. Now, let us uh, have some more uh, terms to be learned. Another one is being support count. What is support count? Support count is a frequency of occurrence of an item set. So how often a particular item is appearing in a transaction? That is what it is been speaking about. So here in this, again, if I come to this example, here you have seen milk, bread and diaper. So if you look at milk, bread and diaper, so here you can see milk, bread and diaper in one of the transaction. In another transaction, again, you are seeing bread, milk and diaper. So we can say out of this whole five transaction, there are two transactions having milk, bread, diaper together. So that is why it is given the count as two. So the support count of milk, bread, diaper together is been showing us two here. Because it is appearing together in two of the transactions, so that is why it is shown it as two. Now let us have a look into what is support is all about. Support is fraction of, fraction of transactions that contain an item set. Fraction of transaction in the sense wherein the items here in this example, if you look at the items which have been here shown as milk, bread and diaper. Out of how many transactions these have been present. So that is what we are looking at here with the fraction. So, if you look at here in this again, once again, so here in, suppose here in our example, you can see here milk, bread, diaper appearing again, milk, bread, diaper, milk, bread, diaper appearing here in two of the transaction out of five. So, what you going to find out, the total number of transactions where these items found together divided by total number of transactions in the database. So that is what you have seen here, two by five. Two is the total number of times milk, bread, diaper together in the transaction divided by total number of transaction in the given database. So that will give you 0.4 in the sense it is appearing there in 40% of transactions. Now, what is actually frequent item set? The frequent item set is actually the item set which is being called as frequent in the transaction. So for that, here we are going to set a minimum support threshold. What is exactly minimum support threshold? The minimum support threshold is the, is the minimum support given by the user according to its accordance to their requirements. So once it is been given so, then that would definitely decide about whether the given item is frequent or not. For example, here if you take, I am going to set the minimum support here as, let it be, I am going to set it as two. Okay, I am going to set it as two. In the sense, here in bread, therein those are items which are appearing at least two times in the transactions then we can say that items are frequent so herein if you take the example of bread bread is appearing there one two three and four then i would say the minimum requirement is two to be called as frequent item set this is appearing four times so i can say bread is a frequent item set similarly if you take diaper diaper has been there one two, three, four again. So minimum requirement is two. It is appearing there in four. So we can say that is also being a frequent item set. Now let us understand another term. What is confidence? What is confidence? It is uh, how often items in Y appear in transaction that contain X. So to understand this, let us have an example to be considered. 
So while we considering an example, let us have this to be considered under x. Let us have this to be considered under y. So what we are doing here in that, in this case, here in this, we are considering x and y together means the support of x, y together. So here if you look at milk, diaper and beer, milk, diaper and beer. So where it's been appearing? Milk, diaper, beer. Let us see. Milk, diaper, beer. And another one again, milk, diaper, beer. Milk, diaper, beer. So out of this total five transaction, two transactions having milk, diaper, beer together. That is what this two is all about. Then divided by the support of milk diaper. What is that milk diaper? X. That means support of X alone. So here in this milk diaper, where all it's appearing, let us see that too. So here in this milk, uh, milk and diaper. If you look at here, milk diaper. Then it's appearing here, milk diaper. Then it is appearing here, milk diaper. Okay. So here in this total three transaction out of five having this milk diaper together. So that is what you are seeing it over here. So the fraction of this going to be 0.67. That means the confidence going to be 67 percentage. Now let us have an idea about what is the association rule mining task. So as we have come to know about support and confidence, it is easy for understanding. So given a set of transaction T, the, the goal of association rule mining is to find all rules having all rules having this support greater than minimum support threshold and confidence greater than minimum confidence. So let us check out how this can be found using a brute force approach. What is brute force approach? It refers to a programming style that does not include any shortcuts to improve performance, but instead relies on sheer computing power to try all possibilities until the solution to a problem is found. So herein, what are you going to do first will be list all possible association rules. Then compute the support and confidence as what we have seen little before. So compute the support and confidence for each rule. Then prune rules that fail the minimum support and minimum confidence. So it is taking this criteria, whichever the rule failing to have this criteria to satisfy, that will be taken out. And this approach is actually computationally prohibitive just because it is starting from finding all the possible association rules, then later on finding the support, then confidence, then pruning. So these steps are going to be so much uh, time consuming as well as taking a lot of computing power as well as the space. Let's see how this all been happening uh, as we have discussed just now. Now, what is the computational complexity of this? So let's see of that by taking a, a example in a generic way. So we're going to consider, we're going to consider here the D, the D as the unique items which is appearing there in the whole transactions. So in general, we can say the total number of item sets you can get from D unique items is being 2 raised to D. And similarly, in general, we can say the total number of possible association tools that you can get from D unique items would be 3 raised to D minus 2 raised to D plus 1 plus 1. Now, why it is been having a, a bigger problem when it comes to the computational cost? 
to understand that, let us have a graph to be taken here in this. You're going to have in your x-axis, going to have in your x-axis as number of rules. X-axis is your, sorry, y-axis is your number of rules and your x-axis is your unique items. So herein, what you're going to do is, you're going to identify, as we have discussed little before, suppose if you're having your R, wherein your D is 5, what is going to be? Total number of item sets going to be 2 raised to D. So for 5 unique items, what going to have your R? 3 raised to 5 minus 2 raised to 5 plus 1 plus 1. So in that way, if you look at for 5 unique items, you are going to have 32 item sets, candidate item sets. And for the same 5 unique items, you would be having 180 rules generated. And if you take one another example, suppose assume you have D is 6. If you go in to take D is 6, then the total number of item sets you can get from that is 64. Then the total number of rules that you can generate from that 6 unique item sets is going to be 602. So it is an expensive affair because it requires so much of computing and space requirements as the unique item increases. So that is what it's saying. If you look at after some point, you can see the graph here, it is exponentially increasing. So it is very difficult to have such kind of brute force approach to be directly applied on in the computing environment. So, let us see what is uh, the solutions, how we can find out those solutions slowly into so that this kind of complexity can be reduced. So, if you look at here the example, what we have done over here in the same examples what we have seen little before is been used over here. So, I'm considering some of those items, let it be those items as milk, diaper and beer. So here, what are all the different possible rules you can generate with milk, diaper and beer? These are being shown for an, as an example. So here in this, when you look at if you're going to generate the support count as well as support as well as your confidence, wherein you can see the support is going to be similar as because the support is being, as you have seen little before, when you look into the support, what are you going to find out there? Support is being where all milk, diaper, beer appearing together. So you can see milk, diaper, beer appearing in how many transactions first? Milk, diaper, beer is appearing in, milk, diaper, beer is appearing here, milk, diaper, beer appearing over here, milk, diaper, beer appearing no more that much okay so these many number of transaction you are having milk diaper beer to, uh, together so from there if you find out support you go into how the support is being similar in all different type of combinations with all these three items but what is going to be deferred is that the confidence each time the confidence going to be different because what you're going to do it there in the confidence as we have seen earlier the confidence is let us have that to be looked at the confidence is those items together so here in this what you're going to see it is milk diaper beer together its support divided by divided by milk diaper alone in this case and in this case milk diaper beer together divided by milk beer. So each of those case, what will comes there is being changed so that you're going to have different confidence. Okay, so the denominator is going to be different so that your confidence is going to be different. That is why this change happened. So as this is the case, then there is no need to have both to be looked at together 
instead both to be in the sense this support and confidence to be looked at together in the sense we can have this to be he found separately so that is what you're going to do is what you get the observation is that all the above rules of binary partitions of the same item set rules originating from the same item set have identical support but can have different confidence so we can decouple this process as one is for finding the frequent items here and another one is being of finding the confidence so that is what we have done here in this as two different approaches one wherein you're going to find out frequent item set so it is divided into two different approaches one is of finding frequent item set what is that generate all item set whose support greater than or equal to minimum support and then rule generation wherein generate high confidence rules from each frequent item set that from the first step where each rule is a binary partitioning of a frequent item set still this step is been the frequent item set generation step is going to be expensive now let us have a look at frequent item set generation what all are the different strategies and all those here in this so if you go with the brute force approach what is going to happen here in just take the exam the same example database wherein you have this many transactions and i have just noticed this one here as the depth is being given in capital n and the width is given in small w and the list of candidate items that you're going to find out here all those list of items you going to have one item set two items set three items set like that so where you have all those being taken into the list where we can have that list that is been as capital n so in this case each transaction for example you want to find out how many times a particular item is been a unique item is been appearing wherein you have to have this database to be scanned when you doing the scanning you have to have it been in the depth as well as in the width so we can say the complexity is going to be approximately capital o n m w so again it is an expensive just because your number of item set you going to have will be 2 raised to d that we have seen already because of that it's going to be expensive now let us see frequent item set generation different strategies and here in this case one of the strategy is been since your m is the reasons to be expensive why don't we have a, a approach wherein you going to have reduce the number of candidates how can you how this to be reduced that is what one of the way we can have the complexity can be reduced so the m is going to be ex, the reason to how this computation is been expensive so use some kind of pruning techniques to reduce m so that we can have this am depth is been as less so that it going to influence the uh, reduction of your complexity next strategy is been uh, just have a look into it we are going to work on this depth of transaction wherein uh, suppose if you can reduce the size of n as the size of item set increases means at the beginning you can start the search on this transaction later on if you can later on in the sense as i told you that the list of candidates going to be increased as one item set two item set three item sets like that so as the item set size increases if you can reduce the size of n somehow then it would be another better strategy wherein you can have that complexity to be reduced so use a sub sample of n transactions there so that it will help us to reduce the complexity at the end and another strategy is been work on your n and m what is n n is your depth of the transaction table and the m is the depth of your 
list of candidates. So use efficient data structures to store the candidates or transactions. What are we doing in this approach is that as n and m increases, the number of comparison is also going to increase. So find out an efficient data structure that helps in reducing the comparison as there is a mechanism to store the item and its count. No need to match every candidate against every transaction. So the best approach would be of that way reducing NM. Reducing NM in the sense the depth and uh, depth of both of it. N is the depth of the transaction. M is the depth of the list of candidates. If you could have uh, these strategies to be, then obviously uh, we can have the combination of this or we can have it's been as separate at least so that you would be having some kind of um, reduction of that complexity so that can be achieved.